Welcome to PC Wits Kids Tech Talk. Today I wanted to show you how I find and remove spyware trojans and viruses when my antivirus program isn't working properly or not finding it on my Windows PC. I stop it from running, I delete the registry values, and I delete the files manually. That's the only way you can truly make sure that it's gone if your uh, antivirus software is not doing the job. Now before you do any of this, back up your system, do a checkpoint, restore, and back it up. Now the first thing that I do to stop things from running that could be malware, you know, spyware and viruses is run the MS config system configuration tool, right? In there there's a startup tab. So when you click on the startup tab, you're going to see a whole bunch of items there that are starting up, right? They're all checked off. If you see something checked, you uncheck it. So that way you know that it's not going to start up the next time you restart your computer, right? So that's how I find things that are useless sometimes that are running whenever you log into Windows and you don't want it there anymore and you see, oh yeah, I know, I know what that path is. I don't need that program anymore to start up. I don't, or maybe you think it's something suspicious and you can find out where it's located in the registry from here as well and then go back and delete the references to that file and delete the file from your computer. So this is the first place that you go in to start removing things. The second place is the task manager, right? So you press Control Alt Delete in Windows, and under there it shows you all the different things that are running whenever you log into your Windows. So under the process tab here at the top, you're going to find that's where the uh, key loggers, spyware, trojans are always running there, right? And they'll be listed there, right? So that's where you would go and you would kill the process by right clicking on one of these guys. Uh, that you know is suspicious, that doesn't have any uh, name associated with it or is, or is suspicious, like I said, and then you end the, the task, right? I'm pretty familiar with what's running in here because I go in there quite often to check and see, so I know what to look for. But if you're not sure, there's always a description, too, on the, on the, on the side. Sometimes you can tell that there's no description, right? Or you can tell that the file name is kind of funny, right, and, and doesn't make sense. Now the other thing is that you want to do is go into the registry itself and delete whatever that file that is starting up every single time uh, is referenced, delete that from the registry. And one of the places you can go to to see if it's in there already is in the um, H key current user and then under that expand that and go down to software and then expand that and then go under Microsoft and then under that expand that and go to Windows and then expand that and go into current version and then run so under run you would have tons of things there under that on the right hand side so I have here under run once for example there's one thing here on the right so you if you wanted to get rid of that then you would just press press the uh, delete button here after you select it so you select it press delete and then say yes to delete it okay if you don't want it or if you, if you know it's suspicious. But I already deleted everything under my run. It's empty. There's nothing there, right? So um, I don't have anything there specified in the registry. You can always do a search and find uh, that exe or dll or whatever it is that is referenced in the registry and, and after it finds it, then delete it, right? So that way it doesn't um, uh, look for it next time when you restart. Then the next thing, of course, is to find the actual files on your computer. So go into Windows Explorer and go into the directories where those files are and delete them, right? Or, or copy them somewhere else where they cannot be found, right? Or accessed. So one of the places that I usually go to uh, is the um, Windows System 32 folder. So let's just say you had a problem that started yesterday. And it could be a Trojan, it could be something that you installed. And if you go into System32 folder, sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll be able to sort everything by date and see, okay, which DLLs or EXE files are running um, and have yesterday's date. When I first installed that program or did this, and it's coincidental that I have here this file now running at the exact same time when the problem happened. So usually I go through a lot of problem determination to figure out what is related and what could be safely removed. So it's not easy necessarily to figure these things out. That's why we got antivirus programs and, and, and all these other tools to try to figure these things out for us, right? And, and look for these uh, associations and remove them for us. But 
what I'm showing you right now is basically doing what an antivirus program does, right? Manually going through all of these things and removing them, right? Completely. But it does, sometimes it doesn't get everything. One place that I that I know uh, a lot of Trojans and, and uh, spyware hides is in the SQL and backslash documents and settings, administrator slash local settings slash temp. In that temp folder, here's the temp folder. Uh, everything in there you can blow it away, right? Just delete it all, right? It's 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 just temporary files. But Trojans uh, and and exe files, for example, will hide in there, right? And they'll be accessed whenever they need to, right? And um, there's another folder, Windows um, slash Prefetch. Things hide in there as well, right? So you, so. There's lots of different places to go and look for to, to, to uh, delete these files, basically. Once you've done that and removed every reference from the registry, from the MS config, from your Windows Explorer, then you basically covered all the bases. Next time you restart your computer, um, the problem should be solved. So anyways, those are some suggestions on how you would do it manually if you had to. Right? So I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.